أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنا أنزلناه في ليلة القدر وما أدراك ما ليلة القدر ليلة القدر خير من ألف شهر تنزل الملائكة والروح فيها بإذن ربهم من كل أمر سلام هي حتى مطلع الفجر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ونستنى بسنته إلى يوم الدين ثم أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته brothers and sisters and uh, today إن شاء الله we'll give a short explanation of Surah Al-Qadr this is the 97th chapter of the Quran now these to my mind, there's no other chapter in the Quran where Allah dedicated to speak about one occasion. Yes, so Surah Al-Qadr is about the, we're not going to translate the word Qadr just yet, but about Laylatul Al-Qadr. And this is an occasion, a particular moment. But there isn't another Surah in the Quran which speaks about, or is dedicated to speaking about just one incident. Yes, so this Surah is quite unique. And the first verse Allah says, and this is a simple translation, Inna anzalnahu fi laylatil qadr. Indeed, we we sent it down in the night of qadr. Yes. And one of the one of the tafsirs of this verse is that Allah is speaking about the Quran, that Allah sent down the Quran to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the night of Qadr. Now what does that mean? It means that, you know, if you go back to the seerah and the night where the person was inside the cave of Hira, yes, the cave of Hira, where Jibreel السلام, visited him. And that was the first time he received revelation. What did he receive in that momentous occasion? He received the first five verses of Surah Al-Alaq. اقرأ باسم ربك الذي خلق خلق الإنسان من علق. Yes, Iqra' wa al akram These five verses were revealed to the Prophet on that occasion and Allah said Inna anzalnahu fi laylat al-qadr That happened when? In laylat al-qadr Now what is very interesting is that the surah directly before surah al-qadr is which surah? Surah al-alaq Can you see that in the mushaf? So Allah connected between these two surahs with this meaning that Iqra' Those verses, when did they come down? They came down, look in the next surah, Surah Al-Qadr. Inna anzalnahu fi layl qadr Also, the one who delivered the message to the Prophet Sallallahu was who? Jibreel Alayhi Salaam. Yes. And Allah mentioned Jibreel inside Surah Al-Qadr. تَنَزَّلُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ وَالْرُوحُ That the angels descend down and a ruh which means Jibreel Alayhi Salaam. So there's a very strong connection between the surah and the one that came before it. Now let's look a bit more closely into the first verse. Indeed, we sent it down in Laylatul Qadr. Yes, in Laylatul Qadr. Now before we understand what Laylat, what the word Qadr means here, the question is asked, why didn't Allah say, Inna anzalna al-Qur'an fi Laylatul Qadr? Rather, Allah said, we sent, Allah never said, we sent down the Qur'an in Laylatul Qadr. Allah said, we sent it down in Laylatul Qadr. Can you see that? The huwa, yeah, in anzalna hu, is the pronoun for huwa, it. Now in English, it almost sounds a bit rude, doesn't it? We sent it down. Referring to something so great as the Qur'an as an it. Almost seems as though it is being trivialized. But in Arabic, it's actually the opposite. Scholars like Imam al-Baydawi said it is for takhim. A takhim means to celebrate something. How does it do that? Well, it's kind of like the following example. Imagine that tonight, okay, is the World Cup final. And even though it's not true, some people are getting excited right now, isn't it? Just because I said that, subhanAllah. Football addicts. So tonight is the World Cup final, let's say. 
Now everyone has planned to watch the World Cup final. Everyone has cleared their schedules, every commitment has been taken off the calendar. Khalas, we will be in front of the screen at this time, no matter what. Yes, everyone. So much so that if one of you walked outside now in the daytime and asked a complete stranger, what time does it what time does it start? The stranger will automatically know what you're talking about. He will say it starts at 8, 8 p.m. Now what just happened there? Instead of spelling it out, what time does the game start? You said what time does it start? Because it doesn't need to be said, it's already on the minds of people as the most significant thing happening in that evening. Do you follow me? So Allah referred to it as, as it, as if to say that the most significant thing on the minds of believers should be the word of Allah, the Quran. So when he says, Inna anzalna, we send it down immediately, the it is already in your mind. You're already thinking about the book of Allah. It must mean the Quran. See, this is the way Allah, he, he celebrated the Quran by referring to it as huwa, not by spelling it out completely. When did Allah send it down? Anzalnahu fi laylatil qadr In the night of qadr Now this word qadr Linguistically It means something that has status and prestige Yeah Rajulun lahu qadr Which means this man has prominence in society The Arab would say This man has prominence in society So Allah said that this night is the night of qadr Linguistically meaning a night that has great station and honor In the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now the scholars they say the implication of that is whoever worships Allah on the night of Qadr automatically becomes a person honored in the sight of Allah as well. Because he honored the night which is honored by Allah, he himself becomes honorable in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ibn Ashur he said Qadr in the verse doesn't mean uh, rank or station. It means Sharaf and Fadl. Sharaf means honor. And Fadl means grace. So the real translation of Laylatul Qadr isn't the night of power, which is what most people do. It is the night of honor. The glorious night. So Allah, He, he called the night the Quran began to come down to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the night of honor. The night of bounty. Why? Because on that night was a link made from the Arsh of Allah to the earth of, of human beings that will continue to guide them until Yawm Al Qiyamah. Allah honored us on that night. So He called that night the night of honor and glory. Do you see? And if you think about it, it makes complete sense because before the Prophet ﷺ became a prophet, before we began to receive Quran, humanity was living in darkness, misguidance, worshipping idols. But from that night until Yawm Al Qiyamah, something special happened. Human beings were lifted out of their darknesses and into the light of Islam. And that was triggered by the revelation of the Quran. So that night. It is befitting to call it the night of honor or the glorious night, Laylatul Qadr. Then Allah says, وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا Laylatul Qadr This is a rhetorical question. It doesn't require an answer. The translation is, and what will make you know what the glorious night is? What purpose does this question serve? The purpose it serves is in order to lift your estimation of this night. As if to say, people, you don't appreciate what this night really means. What will make you understand how amazing this night is? Now when you hear it like that, you, in your mind you're thinking, man, I've, I've underestimated how glorious this night is. I've, under I've underestimated how valuable this time is. So Allah lifts your estimation by saying, What is going to make you appreciate how great it is? Then the next verse comes to help you lift your estimation. Allah says, Laylatul Qadr khayrun min alfi shahr. Let me begin to help you appreciate His greatness. Let me tell you one thing about it, Allah says, It is, Laylatul Qadr is better than a thousand months. What does that mean, better than a thousand months? Imam Al-Tabri, he brings a narration. 
of Mujahid. Mujahid is the famous student of Ibn Abbas. And the Prophet وسلم, said about Ibn Abbas that he is Tarjuman al Quran. Tarjuman al Quran doesn't mean the translator of the Quran, it means the man who knows the most tafsir of the Quran, the most qualified person to speak on the Quran, the authority when it comes to the Quran. That is what the person called him. His most famous student was Mujahid. And Mujahid said the following. He said that in the time of Bani Israel, the Israelites, they lived a man who was so religious, he would spend the entire night praying to Allah. And then in the day, he would go out and fight like a valiant warrior against the enemies of Allah. And he did that for 1,000 months, meaning his entire life. Then Allah revealed to the Ummah of Muhammad وسلم, Laylatul Qadri Khairu Min Al Fishar that the night of Qadr is better than a thousand months, meaning that, O oh Muslim, if you spend these six hours worshipping Allah, standing in prayer, making dua, you will get more reward than that man from Bani Israel, subhanAllah. What an honor. What an honor. In fact, Ibn Ashur said that the name Laylatul Qadr, the night of honor, was unknown to everyone until Allah revealed this verse. Inna anzallahu fi laylatil qadr. It was a hidden secret of Allah that He revealed to the followers of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Was it known to the previous nations? It was kept from them. This is why another reason why it should be something that we honor, something that we hold dear to our hearts. So, what does it mean again? Better than a thousand months. Now, if you do the maths on this. If you do the maths on this, a thousand months is equivalent to how many days? Hmm? I know it's almost time for iftari and the food is like going down to the empty level. Huh? 3,000. 30,000. If you tell me you're an accountant, I may not trust you now. 30,000 days. Yes, now let's do the maths. It's a night, it's not the whole day. And the night for us tonight will be how many hours long? 9 p.m. to 3 a.m. Depending on what calendar you follow. Six hours. Six hours is equivalent to how many days? 30,000 days. Which means that one hour from the six hours is worth 15 years of your life. 15 years. And one minute is worth around 85 days of your life. One minute! If you wasted one minute, it is like you wasted 85 days of your life. Imagine going to sleep for 85 days and then waking up. How you feel like a rubber waste man, isn't it? <laughs> Man, I wasted 85 days of my life sleeping in this bed. Yes? Allah is trying to get us to appreciate how much of a loss it is to be deprived of this night. Yes, and the Prophet وسلم, he said in an authentic hadith, Fihi layla khayrun min al fishar. In the month of Ramadan, there is a night better than a thousand months. Faman hurima min khayriha faqad hurim. He said, So whoever is deprived of this night truly has been deprived. As if to say, there's nothing worse than being deprived of Laytul Qadr. Let me give you some examples. Imagine a man, he's expecting his first child, okay, his wife is expecting, and this is his first child. Something happens and he misses the birth of his, of his child. How will he feel? Left out, right? Imagine a student, he studies so hard for his exams, and he sits them, but then he falls sick on the day of his graduation. He can't celebrate it. Or a person who invested lots of money in a business, and he gets fed up because the business is not doing that well, so he sells his shares. The next day, that business gets taken off by a parent company and the shares quadruple. He says to himself, I only waited one day or about four times what I did yesterday. The Prophet وسلم, is, that, is saying that all of those scenarios and anything else you can imagine don't come close to the devastation you will feel when you miss out on Laylatul Qadr. That is what he is teaching us. خَيْرٌ مِنْ أَلْفِشَانٍ it is better than a thousand months, meaning that if you gave one pound in sadaqah on this night, it would be as if 
you gave one pound for the next 30,000 days. 30,000 days, you gave one pound every single day. For the next, that's what it would mean. Your qiyam on this night, your standing in tahajjud in this night is as if you stood for 30,000 nights. This is what Allah is telling us. Don't miss out on this night. Khayru min al And another fact that will help you appreciate the value of this night is tanazzalul malaikatu wa ruhu fiha that the angels and Jibreel they descend down to the earth on this night now what is amazing is that some of the scholars they said the word Qadr can also mean Tadhiq which means to become confined so what they say is that so many angels come down onto the earth on the night of Qadr that the earth becomes confined in its space because angels have spread out everywhere on the earth subhanallah and you think to yourself, man, this night is so amazing that even the world of the unseen wants to be a part of this night. And the word uh, tanazzal, it is not the same as anzala. Anzala means to come down once. Nazzala means to come down repeatedly. Allah said the angels keep coming down. Over and over again, more legions of angels come down to the earth. And as they descend, the barakah and the rahmah of Allah also descends. So this is an auspicious night. It is a night where amazing things are happening that you can see and that you can't see. And then Allah says, بِإِذْنِ رَبِّهِمْ That they come down by the permission of Allah. Allah never said, بِأَمْرِ رَبِّهِمْ Which would mean by the command of Allah. Permission versus command. What's the difference? See, had Allah said by Allah's command, it would have meant they ordered to come. So they have to come. They've got no choice. When Allah said Allah's permission, it means they want to come. They yearn to come. They're eager to come. Allah says, yes, you go ahead. You really want to be with them? Go ahead. I'll give you the permission. To. The angels want to be in your company on this night. SubhanAllah, imagine that. بِإِذْنِ رَبِّهِمْ مِنْ كُلِّ أَمْرِ مِنْ كُلِّ أَمْرِ means with every command. What does that mean with every command? The scholars, they say that on this night, something else is happening as well. And that is the yearly decree of every human being is also taking place. So these angels come down with the qadr of the year, which means the decision about how long you will live in the coming year. And how much wealth you will have in your name in this year. So you're thinking about yeah, that night, if you were sleeping, okay, if you had too many samosa for iftari, and the night came, you're like, you know, I slept the qadr, man, I need to go to sleep. And you slept. You're sleeping at a time when the angels are writing down the decision about whether you're going to live or you're going to die. How much money is going to go into your bank and you're there snoring away. How does that look? Very sorry state of affairs, isn't it? Yes. Min kulli amr means that these aqdar, these decrees are also taking place during that night as well. A very monumental night. See, now does your appreciation of this night, you know, go into the skies it does doesn't it this is what Allah is hoping that will be achieved if we listen to what Allah is saying Salamun hatta matara al fajr the last verse only five verses long this surah Allah says Salam peace meaning that this night and everything that happens this night and every person who enjoys this night will find peace now the thing about the word peace, salam, it is a master, it is the verbal noun. But you don't describe the night as being peace. You describe the night as being peaceful, right? But Allah said, no, it is peace, as if to say that whoever takes advantage of this night will find peace in his life today and on Yom Al-Qiyam. This is how amazing this night is. It is peace itself. It is the opportunity to find salam in this world and the next. And Allah called paradise Dar salam the house of peace. This is the destination that we want to go to. Allah is saying the secret is in this night. Salamun hiya hatta matar al fajr. Here, it, this night, remains until matar al fajr, which means the break of dawn. Allah never said, ila matar al fajr. Allah said, here matar al fajr. There's a difference between hatta and ila. Ila can mean up to 
break of dawn. Hatta means up to and including the break of dawn. That's another secret now. Laylatul Qadr doesn't end the moment Fajr comes in. Laylatul Qadr continues to include the break of dawn as well. Therefore, praying Fajr in Jama'ah on this night or after this night ends will be more virtuous in the eyes of Allah than any other night as well. Do you see how beautiful the wording is? Now some of the scholars, they discuss when is this night? Just based on the wording of this surah. Now tell me something. Has this surah given any indication as to which number night it is? Huh? Has it has it said 27 anyway? <laughs> has it? Well some of the scholars say actually there may be an indication. Now listen to this here. So first indication is Laylatul Qadr is nine letters long. It's a nine letter combination, Laylatul Qadr. How many times is Laylatul Qadr mentioned inside the surah? Inna anzalnahu fi Laylatul Qadr. Wa ma adharaka ma Laylatul Qadr. Laylatul Qadr is khayr ibn al They say, okay, nine plus nine plus nine is 27. Mm. Some scholars, other scholars say, no, this is, this is being too silly now. <laughs> this is being too silly. But there's, there's another opinion, which is, hang on a minute. How many words are there in Surah Al-Qadr? There are 30 words in Surah Al-Qadr. Yes. And they say that the 27th word is the word here. And here means it. So if the 27th word is pointing to the night of Qadr, it must mean that the, the night is on the 27th night. <laughs> yeah. Again, I mean, this is obviously some mental gymnastics we are doing here. But uh, Allah SWT knows best. All we know is that the Prophet said in an authentic hadith, I was shown the night and then I was made to forget the night. And that is for a wisdom. And the wisdom is to keep you connected to Allah as much as possible. Why should you only be close to Allah in one night? Can we not help you to be close to Allah for more than one night? Yes, we can. How? By telling you or making it unknown when the night exactly is, but alluding to it. So that the real slave, he tries over and over and over again, please Allah, let it be this night, let it be this night. Now the thing is, if you stay up on the wrong night, if you stay up on the wrong night, do you think, that Allah, the most generous, would say, I'm sorry, wrong number, stuff for Allah. <laughs> Does that even come in? Is that something even you could conceive? Allah, stuff for Allah, you know, Allah would say, sorry, you turned up on the wrong night. <laughs> Allah Jalla wa Ala, Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal al Kareem. Allah would give you the reward and He would not mind. But Allah wants to see you try it. This is the point. Allah wants to see you try. So Allah says, Salamun hiya hatta matala al fajr. The night, it is peace. It is your chance to acquire peace and it will last until the break of dawn. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. There are many differences of opinion in this surah, but I have tried to just select a few in order to make it easy for us to understand. May Allah give us the understanding. Now, the action plan. How do we take full advantage of tonight, which is the 25th night, the 27th, and the 29th? The first thing is that Aisha radiallahu ta'ala she said about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa that إِذَا دَخَلَ الْعَشْرِ When the last ten would come then أَحْيَ layl Number one, he would stay up the whole night and he wouldn't do that for other nights. Number two, أَيْقَضَ أَهْلَهُ He would wake up his family as well. Yes, and in one narration, the way the person would wake up his wives were to sprinkle some water on their face. Yes. In the most affectionate and caring way. Basically, don't give people slaps and tell them to wake up. <laughs> Do it in a nice way. Yes? Be, be kind to people when you're waking them up. Number two. So that was number two. That, it, which is what she said. And the third is وَشَدَّ مِئْزَرًا That he would tighten his, literally what we would translate as the belt. Yes? Which is the lower garment. He would tighten it up. Now, what does that mean? Two opinions. One opinion is that he wouldn't be intimate with his wives. The second opinion is no. He was readying himself to push himself to the very limit of ibadah. That's what it means. You know, like somebody rolls up their sleeves. I don't mean before he's going to beat you up. I mean like before he's going to start something, you know, 
it's like, oh, he's getting ready now. The person was getting himself ready. That on this night, we're not going to waste a single moment. We're going to continuously worship Allah and do a variety of different acts of worship. Based on this, we can, we can try and put together a plan. Okay, how are we going to achieve what the person achieved? The first thing, brothers and sisters, is if you're going to stay up the night like the Prophet ﷺ, it is good to take a nap during the day. Yes, some people do not need to be encouraged to take a nap, but those that <laughs> need some encouragement, take a nap in the daytime, then in the nighttime, inshallah, you will find that you are, you know, be able to stay awake. This is one point. And even the person will take a qayruna after dhuhr. So inshallah, you, you have plenty of excuse now to take a nap, inshallah. And when you break your iftar, drink some coffee, or if you want energy drinks, you can do that as well, inshallah. This will help you stay awake. Number one is to take a nap during the day, so you can stay awake during the night. Number two is do not overindulge during the iftar. Now for some people that is mission impossible, isn't it? <laughs> not to overindulge. Come on man, this is my one chance to get stuck in. Most people what they do, okay, and people are looking at each other right now, <laughs> but what most people do is that they have one sitting. The clock strikes the time and you go for it. And everything that can be eaten is eaten. <laughs> Okay, and then they go to pray. Now let me teach you a trick. Okay, the trick is have two sittings to eat. The first, have some dates, maybe some milk or water, have some fruit, then get up. Go to pray and then come back to the table. Believe me, you will eat less. Now even uh, physiologically, the way the stomach communicates to the brain is that it sends the message that, listen, I'm full now, man, relax yourself. That takes time. So if you sit and then leave, the brain will be able to, you know, gauge that, look, there's some food in the stomach. There's some food inside, maybe we don't need to eat that much. If you overindulge, what will happen during the night is you will feel tired, you'll feel lethargic, you may waste time going to the bathroom, etc., etc. We just said that one minute in Laylatul Qadr is equivalent to how many days? 85 days makes you think about the toilet break isn't it <laughs> seriously how many days of your life are you wasting right now in the toilet yes so number two advice don't overindulge during the iftar number three which is unknown to many imam ibn rajab al hanbali mentioned it in his book lata'if al ma'arif he said that it was a practice of some of the early muslims that they would take a ghusl between maghrib and isha Yes, Ibn Jarir al-Tabari, he said that they used to do this in every night in the last 10 nights. Why would they do that? The reason they did that, Ibn al said, is because, it's amazing, he said, it is not befitting for someone to come in the audience of a king except in the best form. Both clean inwardly and clean outwardly. You are going to have an intimate conversation with Allah, the King of Kings. And in order to have the best conversation and to be in the right frame of mind, prepare yourself by taking a bath. So this is number three. Yes, that take a short shower in between the Maghrib and Isha in order to prepare yourself. This will give you, inshallah, the right frame of mind. Number four is that during the course of the night, there are a number of different ibadat you should engage in. All of them is to stand Qiyamul Layl to pray the night prayer. You can pray this in congregation or you can pray it at home by yourself. Some of the scholars actually believe that it is more virtuous to pray by yourself than in congregation. Yes, by yourself because it is closer to sincerity. This is one. Number two, dhikr of Allah. Dhikr of Allah. To say words of remembrance. Alhamdulillah, subhanallah, la ilaha illallah. And to set yourself a target. Maybe I'm going to say subhanallah 1,000 times. Alhamdulillah 1,000 times. This will help fill in those pockets of time that you find yourself free. You can have the tasbih, you can have the electronic counter, whatever you want. But having a target for tasbih will help you to take advantage of the time. The third act of worship you can engage in is tilawatul Qur'an. And it's very befitting that on the night that the Qur'an began to come down to the earth, that the believers engage in the recitation of the Qur'an. And the Salaf would do this. They would increase in the recitation of the Qur'an on the nights of Laylatul Qadr. Number four is Dua. 
And in order to make long, meaningful dua that makes your heart melt, makes tears flow from your eyes, you should plan that dua. You should write about that dua beforehand. You should think about it. Plan, what am I going to ask Allah in these times? Asking about myself, my family, my children, the community, the ummah, non-Muslims, all of these things, write them down. And think about how to ask Allah in the best way. Just an FYI. When you make dua to Allah, the scholars say the first thing you should start with is praise. Say nice things about Allah. Praise Allah. This is the way you should begin your dua. Don't start with Rabbana atina fi dunya hasan. Because now you're asking Allah. And though Allah loves to be asked, you prepare to ask by first praising Allah. Because this gains His pleasure. And it makes your dua more likely to be listened to. Number two after praising is to send salah on the Prophet Allahumma salli ala nabina Muhammad. Yes, Allahumma salli ala nabina Muhammad. Say it, mean it, repeat it. Then you ask what you want Allah. You ask what you want from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So these are four acts of worship. The first one was what? Hmm? Not dhikr. Qiyamul layl. Then dhikr of Allah. Then tilawatul Quran. Then dua. Yes. Point number five. Okay. Is to give sadaqa on this night. Now if you're in the masjid, you can give sadaqa to the masjid. You can go online and give it online. You could phone someone, tell them to give some sadaqa on your behalf. Whatever you do, my advice is to give multiple sadaqa. Different causes. Don't just give to one cause. Give to different causes because they are all different needs. And if you help more people and you are part of more causes, then you will increase in your reward, inshallah. This is another practical benefit, a yeah, practical point that you give sadaqa this night. And lastly, is you should repeat the dua that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa taught us. Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, she asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the hadith in Sunnah Tirmidhi, Ya Rasulullah, if I experience the Laylatul Qadr, what dua should I make? See, we owe Aisha a great deal for asking this question. Because she asked this question, we also know what to say as well. Yes? Radiallahu ta'ala anha, our mother. So the Prophet sallallahu he taught her a dua that is so short, yet so powerful. It demonstrates how much the Prophet he loved us. He didn't teach us a long dua, which many people will find difficult to memorize. He taught a short dua that everyone can memorize. What is the dua? Allahumma, innaka afuun tuhibbu al-afwa fa'fu anni, me or fa'fu anna, us. Look at this dua, amazing dua. Allahumma means, oh Allah, you are crying out to Allah. Allah, please listen to me. I want to ask you something. And look, you didn't begin by asking, you began by praising Allah. Innaka afuun. You are afu. We usually translate this as you are forgiving. It's not totally accurate. Because the word for forgiving is maghfira. And afu is different. The difference is as follows. Maghfira means to cover something up. If you did something wrong and then somebody hid it, though you would appreciate it, there's always the chance that it could become exposed in the future, isn't it? There's a level of anxiety there. As for afu, it means to delete, to erase and to omit. Like a person who treads on the sand and leaves his footprints. Somebody else comes along and kicks sand all over it. So it becomes, it vanishes. Allah ma innaka afu means Allah you are the one who deletes mistakes the one who erases them such that they become vanished and disappeared and you, it's not that you just ask someone who does this you love to do this as well you love to do this to your slaves you love to take their mistakes and to delete them and erase them, make them vanish. That is who you are. To al afwa. You praised Allah now. Now you ask, fa'fu anni, the fa of sababiya, as if to say, so based on this, please erase and delete all of my mistakes as well. 
So short, yet so powerful. So my last piece of advice is that you repeat this dua. Because when you repeat, it shows that you really mean it, isn't it? If someone asks you, okay, and one of my teachers always says this, that if someone phones him once, he doesn't answer the phone. But if the person phones over and over again, he knows that he, this guy really needs me now. <laughs> That's the only time to answer the phone. In the same way, you show you mean it by repeating it. So keep on saying it over and over and over again. Allahumma innaka afuun tuhibbu al-afwa fa'fu anna. Oh Allah, you love to forgive and to pardon. So please pardon us on this night. Allahumma ameen. May Allah grant us all accepted du'as on this night. May Allah accept all of our ibadah and help us to do the maximum on this night. Allahumma ameen. Jazakum Allah khair. Wa barakallahu